stoichiometry how to make a grilled cheese sandwich well that's not exactly what it really is about it's actually more like how to figure out how many grilled cheese sandwiches you can make or even you know how much all the grilled cheese sandwiches you could make would weigh because you know chemists they know how to ask the most important questions so stoichiometry uh, what is it? It's the study of amounts. It deals with amounts, how many, how much, how much would it weigh, and making things, reactions. It's how much you're going to need to make this, how much you're going to make if you have this, and it deals with chemical reactions. But we're not going to do any chemical reactions today. We're going to focus primarily on grilled cheese sandwiches because, uh, as we often do in this class, we're going to learn the simple, learn the process, get the process in our brains, understand how to do a simple thing so that we can then do very complicated things uh, exactly the same way. So, here's our problem. I'll give you a minute to write it down because we're going to be constantly referring to this. Uh, it'll, the slide will be up several times. If you just write it down one time now, you can refer to it, write extra notes on it later. Uh, there are... We're going to have this problem. How much will all of the grilled cheese sandwiches weigh? If you have plenty of cheese, and 1,500 grams of bread. That is the problem that we want to answer today. And so we're going to have five steps to this problem. So uh, as you go through your notes, leave space here. Uh, leave quite a bit of space for five steps. We're going to go one at a time, do an example as we go. So uh, we'll be constantly referring back to this screen. So step one uh, out of five, of course, you're going to make some grilled cheese. You want to know how much you can make. You need a recipe. Obviously, you can't do it without a recipe. So we all know the recipe for grilled cheese. We take two pieces of bread and add a piece of cheese. Now, I know a lot of people like two or four or eight pieces of cheese. I had a group once that liked to put tomatoes and mayonnaise on it, which was fine. But uh, we're just going to go with basic grilled cheese, uh, two bread, one cheese, which is going to make one delicious grilled cheese sandwich. Getting hungry already. So uh, as chemists, we like to be able to symbolize these things. Uh, I say oh, a lot, don't I? We give symbols to these things. Bread is BR. Well, that's bromine. Should use BD, but uh, oh well. Uh, cheese carbon's taken for C. So how about CH for uh, CH for cheese? And that's going to make. Now we don't need a new symbol for a grilled cheese sandwich because it's just a combination of the symbols we already have. It's two breads, one cheese. So in chemistry, we would write a recipe like this. We would write that we use two slices of bread and one slice of cheese to make one grilled cheese sandwich. That's how we would write it if we were doing a chemistry problem. So that is our recipe, step one. So there we go. Step two. Step two. Step two. We're going to identify a couple of things. We're going to name these things A and B. We're going to name these things. We're going to identify. There's always two parts of a stoichiometry problem. There's a a and a B, and an A is the thing that you know. Uh, a isn't a step here. I, I probably should have a dash there after the A instead of a parenthesis. A, a is we're going to call the thing we know A. We're going to call the thing we want to know B. Every problem is going to tell you one thing and ask for another. Of course, sometimes they'll ask you, they'll tell you more than one thing. We'll deal with those when they come. But for now, uh, we'll say that the problem is going to ask us for one thing and give us one thing. The thing we know is A. The thing we want to know is B. So if we go back to our problem, let's identify what what do we want to know. Well, what we want to know is how many how much the grilled cheese sandwiches will weigh. So that's B. That's what we want. And so grilled cheese sandwiches is B. And the thing we know how much we have of we have an amount for we have a number for is the bread. 1,500 grams of bread. A. Okay, so A is bread, the thing we know. B is sandwiches, the thing we want to know. So, step three. Once we know what we know and what we want to know, we've got to convert what we do know into recipe units. Well, what does that mean? Well, our recipe uses slices. I'll go back here a second. Do -de -do -de -do. Step three, convert what you know into the recipe's unit. Our recipe uses slices. It, let's assume we have slices of things. 
but we don't have slices, we have grams. We have 1,500 grams of slices. We don't know how many slices of bread we have. We know how many grams of bread we have, and that's a problem. So we need to convert. We need a conversion factor. We have to have a conversion factor that takes grams and changes it into slices, and that's going to look like that. We need something that tells us how many grams per slice for these uh, for these breads and cheeses. So, um, and for grilled cheese sandwich, this gets a little complicated because you have a big block of cheese. We're going to start slicing it up. You know how how uh, how much is each slice going to be? It's probably not all going to be the same. So that's not going to work out for us. We're going to need to use something a little simpler. How about like some maybe these aren't as delicious, but we can use some of these uh, individually wrapped craft slices of cheese. And those are nice because you can just go on the internet and find how much they weigh. They're 18.9 grams per slice. So we have that information. For cheese, we're going to know the uh, conversion factor is 18.9 grams per slice. But for bread, uh, same problem. We have uh, we have this um, loaf. It depends on how we cut it. So let's go to Walmart and get something else. Here's our Walmart bread. It tells us right here that that's 680 grams. I don't know if you can read that on the bottom. 680 grams. And uh, get that right off the label, and then if we count up the uh, number of slices in those 680 grams, I believe they come out to be about 20. The bottom one, I believe, is cut off. It's pointing to something off the screen there. But uh, there are 20 slices, so 680 grams divided by 20 slices means there's about 34 grams per slice. So, to summarize our conversion factors, bread is going to use 34 grams per slice, and cheese 19.1 grams per slice. So what are we going to do with that? Well, let's go ahead and do a conversion. We have 1,500 grams of bread, and our conversion uh, factors, we're going to put grams of bread on the bottom, 34, the number we just got, 34 grams of bread per one slice of bread. Grams of bread cancels. We're left with slices of bread. To make 1,500 by 34, you get that number, 44 point something slices of bread. So that's how many slices of bread we have. And so the next question, obviously, is, well, how many sandwiches is that? And we all know it's 22, but uh, it's very easy in this problem to kind of do it in your head. But we need to always keep in mind process. How did we do that? And so because whenever we get to some chemistry problems, we're going to see that the, they're usually not going to be things we can do in our heads. We have to have a process that we understand how to do every time. So let's go back to the recipe. How did we get that there were 22 slices of bread? Well, we got it because of the recipe. There were two slices of bread for every recipe. And so we divided by 44 by 2. But how is that going to work whenever there's like, what if you use 13 slices of bread and 4 slices of cheese and you had 37 slices of bread to start with? I mean, it gets it could get a lot more complicated. So how would we do that? Well, step here's step 4. Here is how we do that. Step 4, using the recipe, determine how much can be made or... I suppose it could mean how much you need to use if you're finding uh, an ingredient, but here we're finding a product. We're going to use that recipe. And uh, so the amount of B, the amount of B, the amount of thing we want to find is equal to the amount of A times this weird coefficient ratio. Now in our in our recipe, we said we need two of these things or one of those things, and those are our coefficients. So the coefficient of B divided by the coefficient of A. So what does that look like? Well, let's go back to our uh, conversion here. We have 44 slices of bread, and uh, we have one sandwich per two breads. And we kind of know that intuitively. But where did that come from? Well, here's our recipe. Uh, on the top, or on the bottom, we have this uh, two breads, which is our known thing. That is our A. And uh, that's on the bottom. So if we go back to our uh, our coefficient a here is on the bottom. It's in the bottom of the ratio, and that's why that's why right there. And the thing we want to know b, it's on the top there. So that's where the top coefficient b on top comes from. And so that's what we mean. Now this coefficient is one, even though it's not showing anywhere. But uh, that's why that is. So just coefficients in the recipe, and that's where those numbers come from. So you'll always, in this conversion, in step four, you're always going to get these numbers right up here from the recipe, from these coefficients of B and A in the recipe. And so 
that's where that formula comes from right there. So sometimes people get confused about whether it's B over A or A over B, and it's not uh, something that you should be confused about. It's always B over A for very obvious reason, because if a beaver were to sit on top of an armadillo shell, that would be okay, because he's got this nice rigid shell, and the beaver is going to be fine, and the armadillo is going to be fine, no one's going to get crushed because he's got the hard rigid shell, but if the armadillo is up on top of the furry beaver, he's just going to crush him, and it's going to be bloody and gory, and blah, you don't want that, so you want the beaver on top of the armadillo, B over A. So that is that formula, so we've done that now, and we get 22 and change sandwiches, which we all know you probably aren't going to make 588 uh, ten thousandths of a sandwich, so we'll just go ahead and round that off to 22 sandwiches, um, which actually works with sig figs as well, but in any case, we have 22 sandwiches, and now we have to do step five, the last step of the stoichiometry problem, which is to answer the question. Well, what was the question? The question was, how much will they weigh? How much will the grilled cheese sandwiches weigh? It didn't ask how many we could make, it asked how much the what we could make would weigh, so we have to answer that question. So we know that we made 22 sandwiches, but we don't know yet what they weigh. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what do 22 sandwiches weigh. We need to put in a conversion factor. We need to know, we need to know how many grams per sandwich and figure that out. So we can do that fairly simply. We have the BR2CH is what a sandwich is, and we know that a bread weighs 34 grams and we have two of them, so that's 68 coming from the bread, and we know we have one slice of cheese, which is 19.1 grams, so we add those two numbers together, and you get uh, 87.1 grams per sandwich, which I guess we've not followed significant digits and rounding rules correctly, that should be 87, but I don't want to go back and fix the slides right now. So we got 87, 87.1 grams per sandwich, and we stick that in here, sandwiches cancel, 87 times 22 is about 1,900 to two sig figs grams of sandwiches, 1,900. So there we have our answer. Our answer is that 1,500 grams of bread will make 1,900 grams of grilled cheese sandwiches. And so it has come to this.